Hello everybody, welcome back to the IMITU channel. My name is Shabazz Dan, as ever, I am the IT Geek. We are back now with another episode within my Asia Art YouTube series. Um, and we've covered kind of introductory sort of level so far, um, where we've kind of done more introduction over an overview of Azure Arc, we looked at some of the, some of the Azure Arc services. And we're now going to actually, in this episode, this is just a, a one part topic where we're going to talk about Azure Arc concepts. Um, we're going to cover a few different concepts. Uh, there are a lot of different concepts. There's two kind of specific ones I want to cover that are a bit more advanced. Um, and then in future episodes after this, we're going to go into more sort of um, Azure Arc resource bridge and Azure Arc server and Enable server, things like that. So without further ado, let's get started. So this is Azure Arc concepts. Uh, if you're not a subscriber, make sure you get subscribed. Um, and today we're going to be talking about custom locations and then Azure policy explicit firewall. Azure Firewall Explicit Policy um, as well, which is more of a, again, this is this is more of a concept as well, more of an advanced concept I want to talk about. So let's, let's talk about um, custom locations first of all. So uh, as an extension of sort of the Azure Arc location construct, um, a custom location is going to provide a reference uh, as a deployment target essentially. Uh, the administrators like yourselves can can set up when creating an Azure resource. So the custom location feature is an abstract, uh, the, the backend infrastructure details from, from the application developers, uh, database admin users as well, and other users within the organization. These users can then use that reference uh, from that custom location without having to be aware of those details. So again, it's allowing people who need to use Azure Arc to, to deploy services without knowing sort of the backend details, which could be sort of a security risk. Um, so it allows you to extend that Azure location into a custom location, essentially. Um, and there's an aspect of permissions as well, because you know, it's not just about um, giving all permissions. Again, you need to make sure you, you really follow that, that sort of least privilege access permission model. So since that custom location is an Azure Resource Manager resource that supports Azure Role-Based Access Control, or RBAC, an administrator or operator can then determine which users have access uh, to, to, certain, to create certain resource instances. Um, and this is both on the namespace, within, for example, from a Kubernetes cluster or target deployment of a SQL managed instance, enabled by Azure Arc or Azure Arc enabled PostgreSQL server as well or also the compute storage networking over vCenter or Azure local resources to deploy and manage VMs. Um, and we are actually going to do a bit of um, VM or vCenter onboarding in this episode uh, as well. Uh, so let's give an example of this then. Uh, let's just say a cluster operator can create, uh, could create a custom location that you could call it IMIT geek hyphen healthcare hyphen app. Uh, representing a namespace on a Kubernetes cluster in your organization, just a data center. The operator then can assign an Azure RBAC permission to application developers on this custom location so that they can deploy healthcare related web applications. The developers can then deploy these applications to the IMIT Geek Hyphen Healthcare app without having to know the details of the namespace and the Kubernetes cluster. So we're, sit, we're, kind, of, we're kind of hiding all that um, back-end services from people who need to consume these these Azure Arc front-facing services um, and then you can give limited permissions as well you see. Uh, so this diagram um, is, is from Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes um, and it shows the architecture as well and it's quite important to understand this as well if you, if you want to be working with Azure Arc especially the Azure Arc enabled data services for example. So when an administrator enables a custom location features on a cluster, um, a cluster role binding, was something called a cluster role binding is created. And this is authorizing the Microsoft Entra application used by the custom location resource provider or the RP. Uh, once authorized, the custom locations RP can then create custom role binding or the role bindings needed by the other Azure RPs to create custom resources on this cluster. Uh, the cluster extension installed on that cluster determines a list of RPs to authorize. Uh, so when that, and you can see there's some numbers here in purple which we're going to talk about now. So when the user creates a data service instance on the cluster, at point one uh, that you see, the, the put request is sent to the Azure Resource Manager. At point two there, the put request is forwarded to the Azure Arc uh, enabled data service RP. And then further on where we can see point three over here, 
uh, more more towards the right. The RP then fetches the cube config file associated with the Azure Arc enabled Kubernetes cluster uh, on which the custom location is going to exist. And that custom location is then referenced as an extended location in the original put request. At point four, which is further up where, the, where it says the Azure Resource Manager arm, the Azure Arc enabled data services RP uses a cube config to communicate with a cluster to create a custom resource of the Azure Arc enabled data service type on that namespace that is mapped to that custom location. The Azure Arc enabled data service operator was deployed via cluster extension before that custom location existed. At point five, which is further down where, where we see the Azure Arc enabled cluster, uh, this is where the Azure Arc enabled uh, data services operator needs to uh, read that new sort of custom resource created on that cluster and creates that data control, um, translating into sort of um, realization of that desired state on that cluster. Uh, so the, the sequence steps to create that SQL manager instance or Postgres SQL instance are pretty much identical to the sequence steps that we've just talked about as well. Okay, now let's talk, move on now to talking a bit about Azure Firewall Explicit Proxy. Uh, so this feature can route all Azure Arc traffic securely through your private connection, an express route or site site VPN, for example, to Azure. Features can allow you to use Azure Arc without exposing your sort of on-premises environment to that public internet. And Azure Arc agents use a forward proxy to connect to those Azure, Arc, uh, Azure services. The Azure Firewall Explicit Proxy feature is going to enable you to use an Azure Firewall within your virtual network uh, as a sort of forward proxy for your Azure Arc agents. Uh, and I've got another sort of uh, architectural diagram, uh, but this time it's of the Azure Firewall Explicit Policy, um, and this is using those. This is for, you know within with integration with others. Here, I can enable connectivity servers uh, servers as well. It's really in public preview. But as you see on the left hand side, we've got our on premises architecture that's got our sort of machine agent. Uh, it's got the extension manager that manages those VM extensions, and then um, we've got that the Azure Firewall that explicit proxy that's set to forward all those proxy uh, traffic for the Arc agents over going over that express route. And then that hits our Azure Firewall with that explicit policy that's enabled. Um, with all those endpoints, that's within Azure Firewall. On the right-hand side, in all the green highlight, that's where we have all the Azure Firewall application rules uh, can then be used to control which endpoints are allowed to be reached as well. So there we've got Azure Monitor, Azure Arc, Azure Arc Enabled Servers, Microsoft Transfer for Cloud, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So that's a little bit about how the Azure Firewall explicit architecture works as well. Let's talk about some of the restrictions and current limitations with this then. So the solution uses the, this solu the solution that uses the Azure Explicit uh, Firewall Proxy is it's a forward proxy basically. And that feature does not support TLS inspection. Uh, TLS certificates can't be applied to, to the Azure Firewall Explicit Proxy either. And the solution is currently support, isn't currently supported by Azure Local or Azure Arc VMs running in Azure Local as well. So very, very limited um, Azure local support there. Um, so just to keep that in mind. Okay, now we're going to jump into the demos. This is quite, I've been looking forward to this demo. So we're actually going to onboard vSphere or vCenter essentially uh, using a resource bridge. Um, so I've got a vCenter that's kind of a big shout out to my, my friend, uh, George, who's kind of let, let me his vCenter. So I'm going to onboard that into Azure. And then Azure Arc, and then in, in future uh, demos, we're going to try and manage that as well. So please join me in the demo. Hello, so we're back in my IMIT demo portal, and um, within Azure Arc, we want to actually go to VMware vCenter. And we're going to add VMware vCenter here. Now, this is where we need to create our resource bridge. Now, we've kind of already spoken about resource bridge um, or started that topic. Now, we're going to be sorry, we're going to be starting that topic in the next episode. Um, so we'll find out exactly what our resource bridge is in more detail, but we need to create one. This is essentially going to bridge the gap between our, our Azure resources and our on-premises that we've got. So we're going to do a new one because we've not got one at the moment. So let's do some basics here. Let's sort of call it um, I um, uh, let's just call it IT Geek uh, Resource Bridge 01. It's an easy. Uh, I'll put it in the RG. Uh, I actually want to go to Australia East. 
Um, so we need to give a name to our custom location, tgeek-cl. Uh, and now we need to put the vCenter name into Azure as well. So let me just see the name of your vCenter. Okay, so let me fill out this in a second. So let's call it itgeek-vCenter. Uh, I want to use the same subscription resource group as the resource bridge. And again, here we can enable Kubernetes service on VMware. It's in preview. We, we're not going to use that uh, for the purpose of we're not going to put any tags on either. Um, but we, we could if we wanted to. Uh, so let's download and run the script now. So we need to register that subscription first. Okay, so our um, we, we've registered our resource bridge and we come to the point where so it's successfully registered as you see, and now we need to run the onboarding script. So we open PowerShell on our local machine that we're gonna use as a management machine. Um, so you need to have access to both vCenter and Azure, and then we enter the script below. Um, so let me get my management screen ready, or my management VM ready, and then we'll run this command uh, on there. Okay, so I've actually logged into my um, management server that I'm going to be VM that's going to be using as a management server. This is actually deployed on my vCenter cluster, uh, my, on my vCenter server. Um, and this is what I'm going to be using to manage my Azure Arc resource bridge. So I downloaded the resource bridge onboarding script. And we're now going to run it on this VM. So let's run it now. Okay, so we've successfully onboarded vCenter now. Um, <clears throat> that was a long, a long time. It took about 30 minutes, which is why I didn't share my screen. But if we start at the top, um, here we can see, as obviously uh, I ran the PS1 file, and as we've gone down here, um, it started to ask me certain questions. So obviously it validated a few things that, you know, the 64-bit version of Azure CLI that we mentioned was installed, um, any extensions, etc. And it just checked all the AV, the AZ versions. And then as we went down, um, made sure CLI was up to date. And then it started asking me some questions specifically about my setup. So have I got a proxy? No. Then it asked me to connect to um, and do the device login, which I did. And I chose my subscription or the IMIT Geek subscription. And as I went down, it asked me to, uh, so once it had logged in, we then need to start putting in some vCenter information. So with the vCenter information, I had to put in the data. So obviously it picked up. I first logged into the to the vCenter with my credentials here. And then I had to select the data center, the resource pool, the data store, um, and so on. And I had to select the network, the, the folder. And unfortunately, what I did at first is, so so full, <laughs> full um Exposure here. I actually put the wrong virtual network, so I actually ended up erroring because I just couldn't make any contact with it. So I tried it again this time. Again, did all the validation, and I actually ended up putting in the correct network. So I just chose the same, so same, same subscription, logged in, um, put in the same credentials I did before because they were fine, and I actually picked the VNet that my actual management, that my management server is on, the one I'm actually on. So I picked that, and then from there, I right, chose the tier three HDD. And then I started putting the IP address details for the static IP details for the resource bridge and, and the sort of, um, uh, there's a resource bridge, VM IP, there's a control plane IP, and that was it. And the appliance IP, and that's where it started to install the on-premises. So it installed the actual appliance um, on-premises, as you can see uh, there, there it is there. And then... Um, kind of went and you can see here i'm actually logged into and this is all the stuff that it did um so it's not gonna let me scan up but this is the this is the appliance basically and then kind of uploaded all the templates that it had to upload and they started the preparation for the appliance did all the uploading again up to the data store uh, completed all that and then started to create the appliance and this is where it started to create the virtual machine etc and then finally it started to do the, and that's where I then I actually saw it saw in Azure. And I'll go into Azure in a second. So the, the Arc resource bridge was up and running. Then I had to install the cluster extensions. Then it completed the cluster extensions. It started creating the custom location. It did that. And then it started to connect to vCenter so it could actually add and do the connection from between vCenter and Azure. And I'll go into Azure in a minute, completed all that. Um, so let me jump into Azure quickly so I can show you my vCenter. OK, 
Okay, so back in vCenter, the first thing I just want to show is the actual, if we go down to management and resource bridge, here you can see my IT Geek RSV01 that I called, it's running, it's connected, which is great. And then as we go to VMware vCenter, this is where we can see that. And so we've done the adding in the next episode, um, not the next episode, the next lab that we do, whatever episode that is, I'm actually going to do an inventory and we'll start to manage it and leverage some of those VM capabilities. So that's a really big step, really you know interesting little demo there to add uh, vCenter. We can show the process of how to do that. Make sure you do you know fill up, complete the prerequisites before, and, and make sure you do all the set execution policy stuff in in, in PowerShell beforehand. Otherwise, it's not going to work. Um, so yeah, hopefully you've you've, you've kind of. Uh, kind of learn a bit about that and then learn a bit about resource bridge and how to add that integrate that into your Azure uh, tenant. Um, so now we can really start to have some fun and start managing some um, virtual machines and resources from vCenter. Uh, before we go, I just want to just 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 repeat and, and reiterate that I, I do have a lot of content around Microsoft exams on my channel. It's all for members, so I put the member URL in the description. So for those members, you've got level one IT geek, level two IT geek, and level three. Various different um, benefits to each of those. So if you're interested in, in, in learning about Microsoft exams, I've got MS 900, AZ 900. I've got a lot of advanced topics which are available. So they're available to level one. Level two um, members can have access to some of the, the sort of associate level SC 200, um, the AZ 104, AZ 700, SC 300, that sort of content. And I've got the SC 100 architectural stuff for the third level three members. So get joined up. Um, if you're not a subscriber, why? You know, I'm doing all this hard work, putting all this content in. So make sure you subscribe, hit that subscribe button. So thank you for watching. Until next time, goodbye.